Okay. I hope all of you all have been having an awesome week. Um, pop in real quick because I just want to give you all this quick message in real time, of course. So I give you all a few minutes to come in. We haven't chatted. I think it's been about a week. I think it has been a week. Shout out to all my fellow Chicagoans. Come in. Um, and let me say this real quick, because you guys know I always have to either put a disclaimer out or just give you all certain information. And this is concerning my one-on-ones. Once again, listen, when you schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me and you cancel it, I give you the opportunity to reschedule it if you need to, or you can cancel it all together. When you make another appointment, um, as far as rescheduling another one-on-one, -on -one, and you cancel that one again, then by that time, I'm not really honestly and respectfully going to take you seriously. And so a lot of you all still are trying to play with my personal time. And what a lot of you all are doing, you are sending me these very large emails. Now, I don't mind that. So don't take that the wrong way. I tell you guys, you are more than welcome to email me. But I cannot for days and days and days continue to have conversations through emails. I can't. This is the whole purpose of a one-on-one. -on -one. Whatever you want to talk about, whatever you want to ask me, you can ask me in the one-on-one. -on -one. I will respond to maybe one email. And whatever you got to ask me, you can ask me in that one. But after that, it's kind of up in the air on if I'm going to get back to you or not. Because in the email, I don't have that type of time where I'm going to sit down and be thinking out what my response is going to be to you. And I'm giving information and I'm answering questions. I'm not going to do it. Now, I, I'm not saying in a shady way that those of you who have recently emailed me that I'm targeting you. I'm saying this in general because this seems to be something that a lot of people are doing. And um, I'm not about to uh, go back and forth in an email because it's still taking part of my time out of my personal day. So if you uh, are not ready for one-on-one, -on -one, because I have to keep telling you all, you have to be serious. Make sure you are serious about a one-on-one. -on -one. Please stop disrespecting me and um, trying to be slick and feel like you can ask me a bunch of questions and I'm gonna sit there day by day and go back and forth in emails giving you a response. I'm not going to do that because it's taking up a lot of time. If you don't respect me enough to follow the order that I have and that I've put in place as far as my one-on-ones go, then you don't need to contact me at all and ask me for one. And I say this in love. You will, whoever you are, you will respect me and you will respect my time. I am a nice woman. I am a understanding woman. I'm very understanding. But for a season, I am going to have it set up the way that I have it set up. It will not always be like that. And so the thing is, you all have got to stop trying to take advantage of people that are nice. And you have to stop trying to be slick to bypass rules and protocol that people set up to run their business. If you feel like, well, this person is not worth me paying this or doing this or listening to that, then don't contact them at all. Because like I said, I know some of you all, you try to be real slick. And I've been very tight-lipped about it, but I have to put this out publicly. You will not, male or female, young, middle age or old, black, white, Hispanic, rich, poor, ugly, or pretty. I don't care what you got going on. You will respect my time, point blank, period. So let me get to this live. Anyway, thank all of you all for tuning in. Uh, the Bull Japan, hello to you, girl beautiful. Hello to you. Thank you all for the hearts. Anyway, really quick, guys. Um, I wanted to stop in today 
and tell you all that it is time out for you allowing people to manipulate you in the name of love. You all have already viewed the video message, Black Mac 1978, how are you? You all have already viewed the video message. So you already have seen what I discussed in that message. But in real time, I am going to give some of you all the opportunity to ask me questions about that topic. Stick to the topic. Um, but like I said, I'm going to give you all the opportunity to ask me questions about it in real time. Because a lot of you all seem to be confused and you took it the wrong way as far as me saying to remove yourself from people who want to play games with you and they want to manipulate you but they will say that they love you they will you know call themselves a friend so that is what i want to have a discussion about today and um i need you guys to also understand that you cannot be apologetic about making a decision that protects your mental and emotional and spiritual health. A lot of people feel bad when they make a decision to keep peace in their life. And sometimes we stay way too long around certain friends and family members because of how we love them or how we feel about them and nobody wants to be looked at as a disloyal person a lot of people they um fear being looked at as a non-supportive person or someone who is not reliable or someone who is not loyal and so we have probably all at some point or another been guilty of sticking around in situations with certain people for too long and when you finally get up and you say i am not going to sit back and allow friends or this person i'm dating or certain family members or co-workers or clergy in the house of God. I'm not going to allow them to use my belief in God or to use my respect for God or to use my love for them against me and try to make me feel bad because I am now ready to walk away from them. I'm not going to allow it. And so that is why I'm here with you all today. I am here to tell you all once again, because everybody does not view my video messages in full. A lot of people don't view my shorts. If they do, they don't watch the full 60 seconds. When I go live, sometimes about a particular topic, everybody doesn't tune into the live. Sometimes people don't come back to the replay. Whatever it is, it's okay. I'm not offended at all. I'm not upset or angry about it. But because so many new people come in on a day-to-day -day basis, I will put out these things again and have certain conversations about it again or just go live, period, on a topic. Um, WYLTV, I see you. Um, one thing that I want you guys to understand is that you have got to always tell people what your deal breakers are when you are in a friendship or relationship with them because people get very comfortable and familiar with the fact that you are actually pure at heart when it comes to them people get familiar and comfortable with the fact that you may be a very forgiving person people get comfortable with the fact that you adore them don't think for one second that people in your life do not know how you feel about them. And if you know that you really love people for real, and you know that you want the best for everybody who is directly connected to you or the people you come across on a day-to-day -day basis, even though they may never tell you, people know when you're down for them for real. And so 
sometimes there are certain people who understand and know full well that you truthfully love them. They know that you really care about them. They know you are their biggest cheerleader. Even when they show their imperfections, even when they are not lovable, even when they let you down and disappoint you. There are people out here who are connected to you and they know the type of man or woman you are when it comes to them. But what I have found out in my personal life, and I have seen it in the lives of other people, and I see it in the body of Christ as a whole, is that there are people who will take advantage of your pure heart. They will try their best to take advantage of it. And when somebody is taking advantage of you, it is not always obvious. Because I know right now, a lot of you all in your head, you're probably going to, well, somebody might take advantage of me if they know they ask me for money or they ask me to do something, I'm immediately going to say yes. I'm not going to tell them no. I'm not referring to that. Um, some of you all may go to the fact of, well, I'm in a relationship and this person is a cheater. They stray, but they know I'm going to stay with them through them cheating on me. I'm not referring to that either. Then on the other hand, there are some of you all, you may think I'm referring to those of you who you fear making new friends. You fear getting a new person in your life. Um, as far as being in a relationship with them. And so you stay with the person that you know is really not appreciative of your presence. I'm not referring to that either. When someone takes advantage of you, they will simply just take advantage of the fact they know you truthfully are just overall a good person. They know that overall, you really adore them. They know overall you are a reliable, loyal, and trustworthy person. And when people get comfortable with that, when people know that you stand 10 toes down in your love for them and your loyalty to them and your respect for them, they will start to get a little bit cocky and arrogant and they will feel like, well, I could probably pull this stunt with him or her but they're not going to go anywhere because I know how they feel about me. I know how much he loves me. I know how much she loves me. They tell me all the time they love me. This person text messages me every day. Even when I piss them off, they still cheer for me. They're still showing up for me. And they've been proving themselves to me and how they love me for years and years and years and years. That is what I'm talking about when I say people get familiar and comfortable with your presence and how you love them. People will simply take advantage of you because they know you love them. They know you have their back. They know that anything that goes down with them, you are gonna be sitting right there, drying their tears from their eyes, they know that if the world is against you, they are going to be that one person still standing there and they're going to be on your team rooting for you. They will take advantage of that. And so the spirit of manipulation rises up in certain people when finally God gets you to a place where he highlights your relationships. God will do this for those of you who do not know. The deeper you go in God, the more you pray to the Lord, the more you are open with God, the more you are sincere with God, the more that you submit yourself and your life to God in heaven, God will begin to slowly but surely highlight every relationship in your life. I don't care how big or small it is. The Holy Spirit will let you know when people don't mean you any good. The Holy Spirit will let you know when people don't take you seriously. The Holy Spirit will let you know when people are trying to use you and take advantage of you. And so if you don't catch it, what will happen is that they will expose themselves by what they say out of their mouth when you're ready to walk away. And so one of the things somebody says, like I told you all before in the video message, they will say when you walk away and it could be over the course of 10, 15, 20, 30 plus years, they will accuse you of not being a real friend. You ever had a friend that you all 
um, started really bumping heads with each other and you got to a place where you were just at your wits end. You're like, I can't do this anymore. I'm tired of being nice. I'm tired of being forgiven. I'm going to still forgive them, but I cannot stay in the friendship because he or she is draining me. I have drained everything emotionally out of myself to hold up this friendship or to hold up this relationship. I am finding myself depressed and sad. I am finding, I'm sorry, guys. I am finding myself depressed and sad in the middle of this friendship. And so when you finally wake up, because either God has highlighted that relationship or friendship to you, or you are in the middle of walking away, they will begin to manipulate you and say, well, you're not a real friend to me. I'm a friend to you, but you're not a friend to me. That is one thing that someone will say who has gotten accustomed to you standing 10 toes down with them over the course of a friendship or a relationship. That is one of the things they will say. They will accuse you of not truthfully being a real friend. They will not examine themselves and say, well, if he or she is walking away from me, why are they walking away from me? What have I contributed to the breakdown of the friendship? There has to be something that I've done or said. I can't just put it all on this person. That's another thing. Certain people will totally remove themselves out of the breakdown of a relationship and they will put it all on you. They will say you are the one who was not supportive. They will accuse you of not being a real friend. They will say that you have not had their back. They will completely act oblivious to why you are ready to walk away. And when they accuse you of not being a real friend and they say, I've been a friend to you, but you haven't been a friend for me. That is when you need to recognize that there is a spirit of manipulation there. This is not up for debate with me. You all can argue in the comment section. You can say what you like about me. You can think what you want to think. You can take it to God. It doesn't mind me anywhere it goes. I'm telling you. You need to recognize when the spirit of manipulation is prevalent, alive, and active in your relationship interactions and connections with people. And the spirit of manipulation is very, very prevalent in church, in friendships, in the family dynamic. Heavy manipulation, but a lot of people don't catch it because it's a fine line. It's a very thin, very fine line between love, loyalty, and pure manipulation. Where you think you're sticking around in the name of love. And where you think you're sticking around because of loyalty you're really sticking around because you are being manipulated, but you are not able to discern and pick up on that spirit. I am showing you, I am teaching you, and I'm telling you, you pick up on the spirit of manipulation when the accusing starts. When anybody starts to make accusations against your character or against who you are overall, that is when the spirit exposes itself. When someone sees you walking away from them, they will accuse you of not really knowing or loving God. Yes, Christian men and women do this. You will miss it because you will assume because you know God, you pray to God, and you love God, that other people who take claim to the living God, that they're on the same page as you. They are not always on the same page as you. And so I want you all today to learn, if you don't learn anything else, you do not have to continue to allow yourself to be manipulated in the name of love. You do not have to continue to allow yourself to be 
manipulated in the name of Jesus. Christian people, believers, followers, whatever name you want to attach to the God, because I'm assuming all of us up here in the chat, we all worship and believe in the same God. Okay? I believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is literally God. People was coming in my comment section saying Jesus is not God. Hey, listen, if you don't believe in Jesus, you literally don't believe in God. You don't believe in a triune God. You don't. I'm not arguing with that with anybody. I'm not about, I don't, when it come to these little demons, because already when I've been out here and I'm about to be home in a minute, I'm not going back and forth with these demonic forces. That solely eclipse have done something to a lot of people. Because when I tell y'all all day that I've been out doing my work, People have been off the meter, literally, literally off the meter. People have been approaching me. It is the weirdest thing, and I'm not scared. I'm more irritated than anything. I've went to several places today, and people who I've never seen in my life was like, I know you from somewhere. The devil's a liar. You don't know me. <laughs> we, we, we not. You can manifest all you want, but baby, you definitely don't know me. So I don't go back and forth about that. But if you don't believe in Jesus and you think Jesus and God is two separate people, listen, Jesus says that we can't get to God unless it's through him. So how do you figure Jesus is not God? Argue amongst yourselves. I don't argue with that, <laughs> period. So what I'm saying to you all is that people will accuse you of not really knowing God when you're ready to walk away from them. People will accuse you of not being a real believer or follower of Christ when you get fed up with their toxic, bad, manipulative behavior. And if you allow this spirit to make you feel bad, to shame you, because it will try to bring shame on you. It will try to make you feel sorry for the people or the person or the job or the church or that boyfriend or girlfriend you got. Whatever y'all story and situation is, you will be in a situation where you will slowly but surely start to lose a lot in your life. You will be held back from your destiny. It will be great delay attached to the job God has for you to do because you are allowing yourself to be manipulated in the name of love. People will guilt trip you and say, but if you love me, you wouldn't walk away from me. And they will begin to bring up all the things over the course of the friendship and the relationship or the church dynamic or the family dynamic that they've done for you, giving you the reasons and um, excuses to justify why you should still stick around. I'm telling you like this, you can still love someone. You can still respect someone. You could still want the best for someone, but you remove yourself out of their life. You take your presence from out of their life. And if you are a Christian man or woman and you make any type of accusation against anybody who is walking away from you, knowing that you've been mistreating them, knowing you've been lying to them, knowing you've been taking advantage of them and their presence in your life, knowing you've been taking advantage of their generosity towards you. Generosity goes a long way, whether you're taking care of somebody that's sick, whether you are the listening ear, whether you're the support system, financially you're helping somebody out, whatever it is, you could be a prayer buddy for somebody. It looks different for every last one of you. But anytime, anytime you walk away and that person starts to try to remind you and give you reasons why you need to stick around with them, but they know they have constantly disrespected you and not really value your presence in that friendship, you, sir or ma'am, need to understand you are under manipulation. More than likely, it's pure manipulation. And I am going to continue to expose this spirit. I expose the spirit of jealousy. I expose um, wicked people. I expose, um, and I don't name drop unless the Holy Spirit leads me to do that. In politics, I will name drop on, on a larger scale when it comes to that. But you all have got to stop allowing people 
to cut up with you and to try to beat you down mentally and emotionally because they know you love them. Kingdom Mind and Advancers, hey, how are you? You have got to stop allowing it, guys. In this life, in this life, I have to say it. In this life, you are at some point going to have tension in some level of a relationship. It could be with somebody in your family. It could be with a friend or friends. It could be with somebody you are exclusively dating. It could be with your relationship with your job. It could be with somebody in the kingdom or in the church. There's going to be a certain level of tension there because people are on the edge now. People are going through different things. And sometimes when someone is going through different things, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, sometimes even physically, people become bitter if they're sick or they're battling an infirmity, sometimes they become very bitter and angry and they will lash out at the people close to them. But when people are going through different things, um, there will be tension. Sometimes it's unspoken, but you know when the tension is there. And these things expose themselves and it comes to the surface by how that person interacts with you. A lot of you all, there are people connected to you who claim they're your friend and they tell you that they love you and they say that they are there for you 10 toes down since that's the term that the internet loves to use and um they will come in and out of your life at leisure if you have someone coming in and out of your life that's a problem that's a problem Leave people where they are and allow people to be free. That is what I'm putting out in the airwaves today, even through your tears. Leave people to their own freedom if that's what they want. Because when people take advantage of your presence and they believe you will never walk away from them and they believe you will always be their friend and they believe that you would always love them, they will cut up with you and come back because they know you're always going to be there. But if the tables are turned and you cut up just a little bit, these same people probably are not going to stick around for you. One minute in certain relationships, you all may have experienced where you friends with somebody. And one minute, you all are good. Then a week or two later, you're not good. They're not answering their phone. They got a nasty attitude when you're around them. You're trying to talk to them about certain stuff. They're ignoring you. They've ghosted you. You may be dating somebody. They say that they like you. They say that they're really attracted to you. And everything is on point the first couple of weeks or the first couple of months. And all of a sudden, they vanish. They disappear. They'll disappear for one week. They'll disappear for two weeks. They'll disappear for two months. And then pop back up in your life and be talking to you like nothing happened because they know you're always going to be there. You should not have to ask me or anybody else. Well, why is he acting like that towards me, Kiki? Why is she acting like that? Uh, they act funny towards me, but then they pop back up. They keep popping back up and coming in and out of your life casually because they know you're always going to be there. They know you're always going to receive them. They know you're not going to reject them. They know you're not going to confront them about their on and off behavior and bad behavior. They know you're not going to confront them about their toxicity. People know this. And this is what I'm telling all of you um, in this live. People know what they're doing to you. And they know how much you will tolerate from them. Don't ever, ever, ever allow anybody in the body of Christ to guilt trip you or bring you to shame and embarrassment because you walk away from the church, because the church can be abusive as well. Leadership can be extremely abusive. They really can. And when you walk away, you will be called um, a renegade, you will be called rebellious, 
you will be called stubborn, whatever they want to call you. But people have to take accountability for how they treat the people in their life. Just like you have to take accountability, you need to make other people in your life or who are connected to you take, a, um, take accountability for how they treat you. So many broken women, so many broken women. Hold on, guys. I got to block somebody. Um, so many broken women um, will have so many different things going on in their life because of one man they've allowed to attach himself to them. And I come across a lot of women who um, I, I talk to or I minister to them and they don't seem to understand why they can love a man so passionately or to the core of their soul, but that man does not reciprocate what they do. Their relationship and the inner workings of their relationship with that man is unrequited. So they don't reciprocate what that woman does. And I have to tell a lot of women, some, some men I've um, ministered to them as well, but it's more so women. I have to tell them, they're doing you like this because you have not put your foot down. You keep saying that you love them. They keep coming to you when you're walking out the door saying but if you love me you'll stay with me you said you a christian man well why are you walking away from me you said you a christian woman why are you walking away from me people will do this all the time in the name of love what does christianity now let me first of all before i say that let me say this we are supposed to suffer yes we are supposed to go through, yes. We are supposed to accept trials and tribulations for God, period. We are supposed to go through those things for God. A human being that is bringing chaos in your life, a human being that is bringing drama in your life, a human being that is being very disloyal to you, slick, sneaky, disrespectful, you are not supposed to extend your presence to them for the rest of your life because they're taking advantage of it. But whatever comes on this walk with Christ, we're supposed to stay grounded and rooted in him and for him, not a human being period. And you all need to know this. There is no manipulation when it comes to the dynamic with God and save people. There is no manipulation coming from the spirit of the living God. A human being, human beings will play this game. How long have a lot of you all remained in a relationship or a friendship in the name of love or because of your Christianity. But you knew that person, that job, that church was taking you through. You knew that they were taking you through. But you completely overlooked it because you felt like you were not doing your duty as a Christian man or woman because you were ready to walk away. Stop being manipulated in the name of Jesus and in the name of of love. That is why I'm here today live. If your strength is depleted because of the friendship or the relationship you're in, you need to now evaluate it. I don't care what the history is. I have been heartbroken when I have had to walk away from certain people. I'm not going to say I gave up on them, but when you show me that you feel smothered with my presence or when you show irritation or when you feel like we are on different levels 
and that I am no longer beneficial to you in the friendship or in the family, whatever your thoughts are towards me, one thing I love about myself, I say it humbly, but it's a component that the Holy Spirit put in me many, many years ago. I know how to let people go. That's not something that I have struggled with in my life. I know how to release people. Now, other people will interpret me walking away from them and leaving them as me being phony with them, fake with them, or not really loving them. No, once you show me for whatever went on, because see, some people can stick around no matter what goes on, but it's a time and a season for that. You all have talked to people that have stayed in a, a relationship or marriage or whatever for many, many years because their tolerance level is not there yet. But then on the other hand, you could talk to somebody and they go through something for six, eight months, a year, and they done. No, I give it ample amount of time because I understand. And I'm telling you all, before you walk away, just like I told you all in the video message, you do need to take that relationship or that friendship or that family member. You need to take it to God. I'm not um, trying to inspire you all or teach you all to jump ship and cut people off just at the drop of a dime when you see failure or a flaw or imperfections. I'm not teaching you all that. What I'm teaching you all is that you have to consult with God first and ask God, Lord, what is your will? Is it your will that I remain friends with this person? Is it your will that I continue to date this person? What is your will? God, is it your will that I stay at this job? Is it your will that I stay in this ministry? Because you see everything I'm going through. You see and know, Father, everything that is being done to me and said about me and said to me. It's not victim mentality. It's just a fact. Now, there will be times where God has you stay planted. He will have you stay planted in that friendship. He will have you stay planted in that relationship. He will have you stay planted at a job. He will have you stay planted at a church because he has another plan. But if you are not clear, then you need to be talking to God about it. You need to be praying about it. See, I'm not saying don't extend grace to people. I'm not saying don't extend mercy to people. I'm not saying don't pray for people. You always are supposed to pray for the people in your life. You pray for all of your friends. Every day you live and breathe, you need to be sending up a prayer for your friends. I know a lot of you all probably don't do that. You probably only pray for your kids and your husband or your wife. You probably only pray for yourself. But see, as you go deeper in God, you learn to step out of yourself and stop having selfish prayers. Your prayers change. The further you go in God and the deeper you go in God, trust me, the level of your praying, it changes. Where you might pray for a couple of days and you haven't even asked God to do nothing for you. You're strictly just praying for friends and family or the kingdom or you're praying for leaders. When you get to a level you praying for the country you're in, that's another level. When you can pray for people and politics, when you can pray for the United States, when God speaks to you and shows you a particular thing about somebody, something that they're in and something he's about to do to expose them and uncover them, and you can pray for them, that's a different level. That's a different level. You all got to learn. You may have the gift of the prophetic. I've talked to you all about this before. You may call yourself a prophetess. I'm not here to accuse anybody of not being one. But all I'm saying is that a lot of these people, especially up here on YouTube, they are real quick to put that in front of their name and say that that's what they are. And they talk out of turn. You speak out of turn. You talk out of order. A lot of them were speaking out about that solar eclipse saying what was going to happen in the midst of it literally passing through. As the moon was getting closer and closer to the sun, they were talking about this is how you prepare. This is what you do. And do you all know what happened the day after? Some of them deleted those videos. YouTube was real quiet. 
they were really, really quiet because they understood you talked out of turn. They were more worshiping the solar eclipse, but not even focusing on God who caused the solar eclipse. But they literally, it was like they was worshiping the sun and the moon, but was not even focusing on God. You can't tell nobody how to prepare for no solar eclipse. That is not biblical, period. And I'll talk to you all about this when I went live like a week ago. I th when they kept saying, watch this, watch this, this is how you pre prep and prepare. I'm like, prepare for what? If the rapture was going to happen in that moment, what are you going to do about it? You literally cannot do anything. If God was going to destroy every last one of us, the moment that moon in totality got in front of the sun, there's literally nothing we can do about it. All you can do is just pray. And you and, and all you can do is hope that God's abundant love, patience, grace, and mercy covers you and your children and your family. That is all we can do. And y'all, please stop asking me silly questions. I didn't say anything was wrong with the sun. Knock it off. Please knock it off. See, when y'all start getting immature up here and real silly, I don't like that. Grow up. Don't ask me no dumb questions. Anyway, what I was saying is that with a solar eclipse, there's literally nothing you can do. With rapture, there's nothing you can do. You, you, you cannot prepare for a solar eclipse. I told you all, the only thing you can do is get some glasses or make you a homemade box. Take a cereal box and some tape and make one at home and be looking at the sky. You literally cannot prep for a solar eclipse. So there's that. I don't think we have another one until 2043 or 2044, something like that. I don't know. Y'all could correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. But like I said, yeah, yeah, YouTube was real quiet. And they do this every time. Like I said, a real prophetic gift, you're not going to wait until the media says something and reveal, reveal something. And then you come and piggyback off them. That would mean you're saying that God is delayed and what his order structure and what the vein of the spirit is. that That's literally what a lot of people really pretty much were saying. So it took uh, CNN. It took Entertainment Tonight. It, it took CBS. It took Channel 32 News here in Chicago to really big up and sensationalize a solar eclipse. And then it gave all the prophets and prophetess and the anointed pastors and preachers, it gave you all the green light to come and give a word. Come on, body of Christ, we have got to do better. We literally have got to do better. They were putting out fear-mongering videos. Oh, I heard the Holy Spirit say, everybody be careful today. As you're navigating today during the solar eclipse and you go out here, just be careful. Be careful. You know what? So, okay, so wait a minute. Either you trust in God and you're not afraid or you're praying to a God that says that he's your shield and buckler. And, and you saying, you, you all, are saying you trust and believe in God, but yet you're putting out messages to make people be afraid of something that God has been doing since the beginning of time? That doesn't make sense. That's being double-minded. Either you're going to trust God and trust and say, Lord, the time I've been here on this earth, I know I've been a complete mess. I know I've been a mess, God. I know who I am, and I know you know who I am, but Lord, you know that I believe in you. I believe that you sent your son to take the fall for my sins. And you said in your word, if I believe that your son was sent to take the fall for mankind, that I'm saved. You do want me to follow the commandments. And if you know you've been following the Ten Commandments to the best of your ability, and you've been open and honest with God, why the hell are you all scared? I just need somebody just as a side note. Can you answer that in the chat? I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I, it, that's a real legitimate question. Why do so many Christians live in fear? I'm not saying be an idiot 
and go out here jaw jabbing and getting in people's face and fighting people in public and somebody cuts you off and you arguing with them. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. But what could we do if in that moment when that moon was getting closer and closer to the sun, what could we do about it? We literally have no power or no control to start or stop anything in the air. You can't. You don't have this type of power. We don't have no other choice but to trust God. That's a fact. Just had to give y'all a reminder of that. That's it. So all I'm saying is that we've got to get better. Because when nothing happened, a lot of people was like, uh, uh. but the thing is, a lot of you all talk out of turn. You've got to be more quiet. You've got to be more quiet. I'm not here to argue. Hey, listen, if God told you to release a word and say that, that's fine. But God is not about to pump fear. He gives grace for everybody, all of us, me included, to repent and clean up our stuff. He gives us that. So anyway, like I said, today, you all have got to stop allowing people in the name of Jesus and in the name of love to manipulate you. When you are walking away from someone who is mistreating you, you don't have to apologize for it. You don't allow anybody to make you feel bad for removing yourself. You don't allow it. And so if you feel like to prove that you love somebody is to stay with them through whatever they do to you or through whatever they say to you. Now I would urge you to go to God and reevaluate your connection to that person. I really need you all to reevaluate that. There is a list of what God talks about as far as love goes. We know that love is loyalty, forgiveness, um, understanding, patience. We know this. But when you are left standing and you don't know where you stand in a friendship or a relationship, then what do you do with that? The body of Christ will make up every excuse. We've got to stop making all of these excuses. I'm, I'm sorry, excuses as to why you stay in the face of abuse and mistreatment. A lot of people in the body of Christ, they will use their religion or they will use their belief in God as a reason and justification to stay. And most of the people that do this, they're not even married. There's no way you don't even have a husband or a wife, but you're sticking with somebody that you're, not that I promote sex outside of marriage, but I know those of you out here, a lot of you all are having sex and you're not married. And the fact of the matter is, and it's a sad state of affairs, where you all stay in these situations where the person is not even your husband or your wife, but you put up with everything that they throw your way to prove to them that you love them. And the minute you get tired of whatever it is that they're delivering to you, that's when they accuse you of not really loving them. It's crazy. It's crazy. And so what I'm saying to you all is manipulation is not a part of love. If you have to play a game with somebody to get them to like you or to get them to stay with you or to get them to try to con you know, convince them that this is why you need to be in my life, that's not coming from God. That's not coming from God. You don't have to chase anybody down. You don't have to kiss anybody's butt. You don't have to sweat anybody when it's real, pure love or respect. 
because from a romantic, it's not always from a romantic standpoint, just with friends. If you have to use any form of manipulation to get a friend to stay in your life, that friendship is not of God. People should naturally just want to be loyal to you if they care about you, even though you are not always perfect. You're not always perfect. You don't always do everything right. You don't always do everything right. So today, before I get out of here, I just want to let you all know when you see manipulation rise and when you see that people are making accusations against you because you are finally fed up with how they have been treating you and handling you. You need to remove yourself. But before you remove yourself, you always go to God about that relationship. You go to God about the relationship. You talk to God and you ask God, God, is it your will that I remain friends with these people or this person. God, is it your will that I remain at this ministry? Sometimes God will have you stay planted because he wants to work on you. I have told you all this numerous times. He will work on you. He will change you in the midst of a chaotic situation. He wants to grow you up spiritually. And so he will have you stay planted in a certain ministry or continue to be friends with a certain person. Whatever God has you do, even when you don't understand, know it's for a purpose and know that he will get the glory out of it. And, and, and that's just what that is. And this is what I need you all to understand. Like I told you all in the message, I'm not going to touch on, um, I'm not going to touch on marriage. Um, well, I guess I can touch on it a little bit. With marriage, because I get a lot of emails. Oh, I get a lot of emails. Let me address this before I get out of here. A lot of married people um, come and email me and, you know, they talk about how their spouse is cheating on them. They talk about how their spouse is uh, disrespecting them. They talk about how tired they are of what their husband or wife puts them through. And they want to know, is it okay? A lot of them will celebrate walking away from their husband or their wife. I'm going to tell you all again. The Bible speaks about separating from your spouse. For various reasons, you have to consult with God about that. But the actual outline for a divorce, God gives the green light on that only for adultery. That's it. That's all. And so before you are quick to jump ship on your husband or your wife, um, you need to realize that you chose your spouse. That is who you chose. And you need to take your marriage vow seriously. You, you need to stick with your husband or your wife because in front of witnesses and before God, you swore to stay with them for better or for worse, for richer or poorer, till death do you part in sickness and in health, you, if you're married, you swore to God and in front of witnesses. See, I don't think a lot of you all understand when you get married and when you're ready to jump ship from your marriage and at the twinkling of an eye, you ready to, girl, beautiful, thank you so much. When you are ready to jump ship and leave your husband or leave your wife in a marriage, your witnesses who was at that me that wedding, they have the right to confront you about it. I know you all don't know the real order of marriage, but anybody, I don't care if you went to the city hall in your city or state 
and got married. You didn't have to have a big luxurious wedding. But your witnesses, your siblings, your friends, your co-workers, everybody that you chose to invite to your wedding, they have the right to confront you about why you're divorcing your husband or your wife. You don't have to give them details. You don't have to, hey, Poop, you don't have to tell them details. Hey, Randy, you don't. But they have the right to confront you. That is why you trust and you are very particular about who you invite to your wedding. Period. You, 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 you all have to understand that. I know a lot of you all feel like because of the way the world does things with their marriages and with their friendships that everybody in the body of Christ, we can act that way. When I got, I, I'm not going to even say I got in my flesh when I filed for a divorce. I'm, I'm not going to say that because I waited for a year and a half to make that final decision. And so all I'm saying is that when you invite people to your wedding, you invite the people that you trust, that you know, and they know your spouse. And so when you are about to walk away from them, the witnesses, that means everybody that was at your wedding, they have the right to confront you about it. You swore in front of them and in the presence of the Lord. You took those vows. You made that covenant. They have the right to confront you. Why are you divorcing your husband, sis? Why are you divorcing your wife, bro? Why are you cheating on your wife, bro? Why are you cheating on your husband, sis? Now, I know we not all doing this. We not like specifically asking people that we know who are married that are separated from their spouse why they're doing this. But all I'm saying is that you all, that's who you chose. And I know what some of y'all are going to say. You're going to say, well, Kiki, they show one part of themselves before we got married. And after marriage, a whole nother him or her came out the box. I didn't sign up for this. And I agree with you. I agree. People can be deceiving. They can deceive you in the beginning. Especially those of you, you got married in lust. You wasn't necessarily in love. It was lust active. You lusted for your husband. You lusted for your wife. You strictly went off their physical appearance. And you had sex outside of marriage. And you were stuck on the sex. And so you went and got married to them. But then after marriage, you found out that they were a gambler. You found out that they were a, dr a down-low drug addict. You found out that they were a down-low out in the alphabet community, male or female. You found out that they were abusive. You found out that they were a drunkard. You found out all this stuff, but they were really good at pretending for the six months or the one year or the three years you dated them. Provalia Smith, I hope I said your first name right. Yeah, so God is causing a separation. If your, boy, if, if your boyfriend broke up with you, we are in the season of exposure and separation. You need to go somewhere and praise God. That's what y'all need to understand. And, th and that's why I'm going live to tell you all, and I'm mixing it with that solely eclipse talk. Y'all got to understand the separation has been here. It didn't start on April the 8th. The separation been going on for years. You all didn't catch it. You know what y'all was doing? When people were dumping you and divorcing you, and it's not everybody's situation, because some of y'all, you deserve to get divorced. You was constantly cheating. So there's that. But I'm talking about those of you, you was falling out with friends. They was ghosting you. They was ignoring you. And you kept just being a friend, being a friend and being support. That church, you remained loyal at that church for six, seven, eight, nine years. And finally, it was, as they say, the straw that broke the camel's back. That was the separation. People could feel the way they want to feel about it. Certain, certain people would be like, oh, they not on God's side. They not one of us. They in the world. Yeah, y'all got to stop with that. Because people that leave a certain church or they leave a certain ministry, what makes a lot of you all in the body of Christ, if you guilty of this, what makes you think that that person is in the world? Demonic forces are behind a lot of people that have walked away from a church. If you don't know all the details of why people are scattered, you need to be quiet. You need to be quiet. 
And then you need to understand if you say that you're in the prophetic or whatever your gift is, you need to know what comes with that lifestyle. <laughs> A lot of people, they don't understand what comes with that lifestyle. When God starts opening up your ear and your spirit to hear things and he's exposing and uncovering people and, and situations to you, you need to understand what comes with that life. That's not easy. You don't even want it. I was sitting back a couple of nights ago. I'm not even getting into what God was revealing. It was just a very particular thing that repeatedly for the past three years, God keeps coming to me about. And I just had to sit there and I'm like, God, I don't even care about that. I don't care about what this particular person, they're doing. I, I don't even need the information. But you can't stop what God want to reveal to you and tell you. But y'all be quick. I'm prophetess. I'm prophet. D -d 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 yeah, okay. So I would love to have a video camera follow you in your everyday life. Because you're not going to tell me your life out here is sweet and you got that title and anointing and call on your life. You're not going to tell me that. You're literally not going to tell me that every single thing in your life is lined up. On point. Crisp. Girl, beautiful, thank you so much. You're not going to tell me that. You live in that life where a call is on your life for real. This ain't no joke out here. As silly as I am and as long as I love cracking jokes, everything and every day of my life, I'm not laughing. A lot of nights I'm crying. I'm up. I'm talking to God. I'm praying. I'm warfaring. Y'all keep thinking this stuff out here is a joke. The spirit, we are walking spirits. People was cutting up all day today. I, I have had several situations and I don't fear it, but you just get irritated by it. Cause it's kind of like, you be like, man, leave me alone. Get out of my face. Have a great day. I'm just trying to go to the, I'm just trying to shop and buy a loaf of bread. Get the hell out of my face. I'm just trying to go here. I just want to spend time with my kids. I, I, I don't have time for it. That's more low, more so where I'm coming from. But if you think this stuff right here is a joke when you walking under the umbrella of God for real, not casually, not for play play, not for show for your Facebook and your Instagram and your YouTube. You literally when them cameras go out, you literally are living your life for God for real. This is not a laughing matter. It's not funny. You will be angry at God. You will question God about stuff. You will not be laughing. You are not well liked. You are not the world's cup of tea. And it could be family and friends that are close to you. So if you are being cut off by friends now, praise God. What are y'all crying for? I praise the Lord. Somebody call me right now like, Kiki, I'm done with you. I don't want anything to do with you. You're this or that. I'm going to look at them and be like, God bless and Kiki going to go and move on with, baby, I'm still going to be out here eating my chips, drinking my tea, oil in my scalp at night before I put my bonnet on, baby, and, and I'm going to sleep good. Take my shower, put on my jammy jams, and Kiki life going to go on. Y'all got to understand, I, I am the queen. I am the connoisseur of letting go, letting people go. And oh, I've cried. I've been upset. I think about certain people. I love them. I'll still consider them a friend or whatever. But you're not going to get me down like that. Who, who the hell are you? You didn't create me. You're not my God. Y'all got to stop idolizing friends and boyfriends and girlfriends and churches and your job and, and your children. Because some people, you idolize your child. Your child is your calf, your golden calf. Can I just really get really blunt with y'all? This is why people don't be liking me. Because I go there. And I see it. People worship their children. And God is disgusted by it. They literally worship. Anytime I hear somebody, I want all the smoke behind this one. Why would you want smoke behind your son or daughter? So you will put yourself in harm's way. On account of something stupid your son or daughter doing. Now, I can understand if your son or your daughter is innocent and blameless. Yeah, okay, of course. Okay. Let's get to it. Time to go to work. You trying to mess with my seed. But a lot of y'all, 
your child, your daughter got a lot of mouth. Your daughter, your son is a mess starter. They are crap starter. They always lying on somebody, always gossiping, always in somebody's business. They sleeping with people, husbands, wives, boyfriends. They're abusers. And so when somebody about to come at your child head, a lot of y'all being the mother cub or the daddy cub. Oh, I want all the smoke. Now, nah, baby, one of my kids act up and you out here and you kicking stuff off with people and it's unprovoked and unwarranted. I don't want no smoke behind that. This your life. I'm going to keep you in my prayers. You're kicking up stuff and you want me as your mother to come to your rescue. Your rescue. No son, no daughter. Mommy not doing that. Call me what you want. Call me. Go to your grandmama. Go to cousins. Go to my brother. I don't care who you go to. Don't put me in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all. Y'all don't want to hear the ugly truth about the matter. Your children are your golden calf. Your boss at work is your golden calf. Your pastor is your golden calf. Y'all about to find out a lot of stuff about these men of God that you raise up and you worship them and you think that they are pictures of perfection. You will see very, very soon that the ones who are very popular that you love and that you like and they can do no wrong in your eyes, you are going to see very soon and be shocked at the sexual immorality, the outside children and the abuse that is going on in the house of God with very, very well-known bishops, pastors, archbishops, and whoever else you're going to see. You better get in the face of God because He's not playing around. You will see. Instead of always wanting to talk and thinking you know everything, you need to be silent sometimes. That's why I told you, you would not get content from me every day. Y'all not finna see me up here every day. You need to get more in God's face and be quiet. I'm not making no videos every single day. It will not happen. It's too much stuff that God is downloading in this season. You got to be real sensitive to that. And then when he's revealing things to you, you need to be praying against a lot of stuff. The United States is in bad shape, very bad shape. And God has really been talking to me about that. We are in very, very we, 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 it's not good. The United States is in trouble. It's in trouble. And so while you all are worrying about holding your money to your ear and you worried about a BBL and you more worried about your lashes and you worrying about a house or who is this and who said that, if you more worried about that than God, and, and you're standing with God. And if you really are out here loving people for real, for real, not for fake, you are in a bad place, sir or ma'am. You are in a very bad place. If you are quick to call your man before you pray to God, you quick to call your woman before you pray to God, you quick to go worried about your kids and kicking it with your kids, you got the time to go monitor somebody on Instagram or Facebook. And you trying to plot and plan the scheme against people. And you, but you can't even give God five minutes of your time. You can't even read two scriptures out the Bible. You're not sitting somewhere for a couple of hours to see what God is about to download in your spirit. And you sit with that. Not, okay, let me get my phone and record and tell. No, but did God tell you to release that? God could just be revealing something to you just for that to sit with you and for you to pray. Y'all be talking too much. Talking too much. Hey, Mr. Hoodie, I see you. So what I'm saying, guys, is today, today, while the separation is continuing to happen, and we need to be praying for ourselves, we are not in a lot of compromising situations. 
And so I, what I'm saying with that is that until we are faced with something, we can easily say where we are now because we're comfortable, meaning there's no immediate danger. We could say, I would never do that. I would never go against God. Don't ever get arrogant and cocky. Don't, just don't do it. This is why we got to stay in his face. So he gives us the strength and the knowledge and the boldness and the courage to always contend for the faith. We don't know everything that's ahead. But this is why we got to spend more time. I don't know about y'all, but I don't have time to be worried about who is my friend or not. I literally don't have that. I don't care. I can't care. I can't. Do I care about them? Do I love them? Yes. But I can't put the energy and the focus on who really likes me or not, who's really my friend or not, who who cut me off. Who's thinking about that? You you so what? God is exposing who they they don't care about you like that. Y'all gonna see. You gonna see because you probably already know now, but you denying it. These people out here are not really believing in God like that. And I hope that I never let go of the Lord. I'm, I'm just going to put that out there. I hope I never do. But all I'm saying is that y'all know now it's people that's arguing about God and Jesus being separate. They don't believe it. People still doing the Carlton Pearson thing, but they don't believe nobody is going to hell. They don't believe that. They on the other side. It's two sides, the world side or God's side. That's it. It's not going to be no in between. I know you all like to believe that that's the way that this is about to go. It's not. It don't matter what denominational church you go to. You're either fully 100% on God's side. You cannot get to God unless you believe in Jesus Christ. Do not come to me and tell me that the letter J was not in the alphabet when Jesus came or before he came. Do you believe in him or not? Every time I go live, I'm going to talk about that. If you say now that you don't believe that, that would mean you're not on God's side. You're not on God's side. There's your exposure right there. You are not on God's side. This is biblical. This is biblical. It's not my opinion. That is in the Bible. Yes, he gives you grace and mercy he gives you us all of that. But you got to believe and know who he is. You got to believe that. And if you don't, you are in a spot where you're lukewarm now. You you keep questioning God's existence. Well, I don't know if his name Jesus. I believe in God, but I don't really know if I believe in Jesus. You're not on the kingdom side then. I'm going to tell you flat out. Pray for your family members because that's what I got to do. Some of them, they, they say they believe in God, but they don't believe if Jesus is his name, well, then you ain't on his side then. This is not deep. It's real cut dry and very direct. Let me. I'm just leaving that on y'all mind for y'all for your homework. You need to really be thinking about that. You really need to be asking yourself, whose side am I on? Y'all got all these questions about everything concerning God. Either you believe he died on the cross for your sins or you don't. If you don't believe that he is in the bosom of God and God sent himself, he took a part of himself and manifested himself in flesh so he could get more of an understanding as to how we can be as imperfect, filthy humans. Because he repented, he made the first batch of humans going back to Genesis and Exodus. This ain't deep. It's not deep. If you don't believe none of that, I would next ask you, what are you living for then? You really think that we were created just to walk around, go to a job every day, give birth to kids, get married, fail at marriage, if that's what you did. Become a millionaire if God blessed you with the opportunity to become a millionaire. Get sick and die if that's what it was. Or maybe you died and you wasn't sick. And then after that, it's nothing. If it's nothing when we die, no heaven, no hell. What was going on before we was created? What, what was the point? I, like you have to be living. You have to know what, what are you living for? Who are you living for? 
What is your purpose? What are you leaving behind once you die for the people that's going to come behind you? What legacy or memory are you going to leave behind? You got to stop being embarrassed of the gospel. You got to stop being embarrassed of Christ and what people you went to school with and in your family are going to think about you. I am so over that. I am so over what my family thinking about. I'm so over people on Facebook. I ain't even on Facebook anymore. But the people that's up there and who I went to school with, you have got to stop being concerned about what they going to say about you. They been talking about you. It didn't take you to start talking about God for them to talk about you. They've been having an opinion about you. They've been speaking incantations over your life. They've been trying to cast word spells and curses against you. They've been doing it. Trust me, it didn't take for you to start announcing God in your life for them to kick up and start doing it. You ain't been a cup of tea. They've been acting phony with you. This is why when you go deeper in God, you're not hearing from them. Because they don't care about you like that. <laughs> that's a that's a fact that's a fact now some are busy some are busy some are working they don't have time to call you they don't have time to call you but for some of them they know exactly what it is you make them uncomfortable you make them uncomfortable they don't like how you talking they don't like how you walking they don't like that you're changing of of who you used to be you used to drink with them you used to smoke with them some of y'all you probably did sleep with some of them you cut some of them out you showed a, a worldly carnal side but because you're trying to get away from that and god is transforming you they feel some type of way about that that's it that's it Okay, hold on, y'all. Uh, who else I got to block? I'm just blocking people, y'all. But I'm done with the message. Thank all of you all if you shared this live. Thank all of you all if you subscribe from this live. I do one-on-ones, go back to the beginning of the playback. I explained and broke down what I will and won't accept concerning my one-on-ones. It is not mandatory, but you need to be serious about it if that's what you want to do. Shout out to all of my members. I see Kingdom Mind and Advancers up here. She is uh, one of my members, Randy. He is one of my members. A couple of Mr. Hoodie is up here. I don't know where Danny is. I have not seen Danny in a while. I hope Danny is okay. If you're in the live, Danny, please, can you um, show yourself? Show yourself, Danny. That's if you up here. Miss Lynette, oh, I see you. Yep, you do have to believe no gray, just black or white, no middle. Yep, it is no longer a middle ground. It is no longer a middle ground. And, um, you know, people, they laugh, and that's fine. People could laugh, y'all could laugh and say whatever. But um, a lot of that laughter about to stop. It's only a matter of time. You have no control like you think you do. That's what trips me out about the world. And even people in the kingdom, they talking about, I'm going to help you prepare. You can't help nobody do anything. You preach the gospel. You tell people about God. You put out the information. If somebody needs to be healed or they need you to pray, you do that. You literally have no control over when God coming back or what you need to do for you. You know, unless God give you specific instructions, then it's nothing you can do. You better just stand strong and trust God with the best of your ability. And if you are having trouble, ask God to help you in your unbelief about him. Ask him to give you the strength. Ask him to give you the strength. And the young people that's up here, all of you all that's under the age of 21, you all go find some business. You know I love you, but a lot of you all are very, very silly. 
a lot of you all are very silly and I just don't have time for it today. You all are up here making stupid comments, just, you know, and that's why I say, you know what? I think the next time I go live, I've told you all before, one day it's going to come a point I cut off comments. I just don't want to see it. Because a lot of you all, you get real disrespectful. When you are passionate about something and you talking about something, the last thing you want people to do is make a joke of that. Especially when we're talking about Jesus Christ. I don't find anything remotely funny about that, even if you don't believe in it. The thing is, you're up here watching a woman that believes in it and you're laughing. If you take me or my belief in God as a joke, why are you here? Why the hell are you up here on the live? You all keep, it's more than 100 people up here. It's more than 100 of you all up here. Now, I know it's some witches up here because they tune in. They want to monitor and get bits of information. I, I definitely know that. And I know some of you all that know me in real life, y'all watch and monitor and it's entertainment for you. But even in that, get you some business. Don't a lot of y'all got to get ready for work in the morning? Real talk. A lot of y'all need to literally be in the house getting ready for work. You need to be getting ready for work to punch that clock. You need to be getting dressed and showered and ready for school tomorrow. But y'all will still continuously come up here all to put a laughing emoji or ask a stupid question. I've never understood it. Utilize your energy and your time for the people that matter to you. There is no way in hell I am going to be on anybody's live or channel that I don't take seriously or that I think is a joke or fake or stupid or broke or what, whatever thoughts you got that are not pure or whatever your motive and agenda is, because you don't have no motive or agenda for me. You might think in your mind that you do, <laughs> but the God that I serve, you will always get shut down. I don't care how much you monitor this channel or me. You literally have no power or authority in my life, period. So there's that. But I'm not about to sit and watch anybody. Over 100 people are in this live right now. And y'all be asking the most stupid, basic questions. Ask me an intelligent question. Don't, don't ask me a loaded question. Don't ask me a stupid question. A lot of y'all questions are real stupid and basic. Come up higher. Ask a question that's on a higher level and in a deeper dimension. This is why a lot of y'all, I don't even pay attention to you. I just block you. Literally. So anyway, guys, thank you all for tuning in. I don't know when I'm going to go live again. I cannot tell you if I'm going to give you all new content um, today or tomorrow. I don't know. My week has been very busy, very busy. I was busy all day today. And so when I go in the house, I, I, won't, I need my rest. But you know, I love all of you all. I appreciate those of you who have tuned in. And shout out to all of my members. Excuse me, new and old. Shout out to all of you all. Thank you all for coming up here every time I do go live. Go live. Thank you all for um, being very supportive. If you are praying, thank you. So I appreciate all of you all. I'm going to shout a couple of you all out. I, I King Demand and Advancers, Miss Lynette, Jessica, Mr. Hoodie. I see you. Um... Black Mac, I see you. And I see you. Adina, I see you. Uh, is it Thoraya Best? I think that's your name. Um, and beautiful girl, thank you again for the blessing. I appreciate you. Mohammed, I see you. Thank you too. Uh, Jaden, you said it's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Boo Boo Grayson, okay. I will be sending up a prayer for you and I speak healing to your body in Jesus' name. 
in Jesus' name. I don't like hearing that when I hear about people being sick. I definitely don't like to hear that. Um, let me see who else. I think that's it, guys. Um, yeah, that's it. But um, like I told you all, stop letting people manipulate you in the name of Jesus and in the name of love. Before you remove yourself from anybody, pray about it. Don't get in your flesh and just walk away from friends. Don't just walk away from friends. Don't just walk away from that job and family. I am teaching you all, you, you put it on the altar, go to God. Pride, pride and arrogance in your flesh causes you to walk away from people the world does that the world does that and excuse my phone guys it's a lot of calls and stuff coming in through my phone and i know some of these people that are calling me while i'm literally on this live know that i'm live <laughs> but they are still calling me and um you know whatever um rita i see you rita zimmerman I will send up a prayer for your family. Leslie, I see you. Liberty Bible Institute, I see you too. Uh, Prodigy, is that your name? You said, can somebody be gay and a, and a Christian? Yeah. There are lesbian and gay men and women in the body of Christ. But you're not supposed to remain that way because Jesus is a deliverer. So there's that. I need you to know that. You're not hated. Anybody that hates you because of your sexuality, God will deal with them. Okay? Just if you was confused. Wade Thomas, you said you're new here. Well, thanks for joining in, Wade. I appreciate you. But like I said, Dalton Kelly, you said your grandpa died last week. RIP to your grandpa. Prayers up for you and your family. Grace and I see you. Um, numinously tinged, you have a great day. Because you're blocked. But have a great day. God bless you. God bless you. Um, so anyway, guys, like I said, um, don't let anybody manipulate you. Take every relationship to God first. And if God gives you instructions on cutting that friend off or leaving that job or that ministry or that person you've been dating, you better obey God. Because when you get out the will of God, you can be dating somebody that's out of the will of God. You could be at a job that is out of the will of God. You can be around certain family members that's out of the will of God. You can love your family. You love them. Be there for them when they need something. But you don't have to hang with them. That's the purpose of this life. That was the purpose of the video message that I put out. Just stop allowing yourself to be manipulated because you love somebody. Or because you believe in God. Or they believe in God. If they want to accuse you of being anything besides a child of God because you are tired of their bad mistreatment of you and they start attacking your belief in God or slandering your character, then that is the answer and revelation as to why you are actually making the right decision to walk away from them. In marriage, you chose that man or that woman. You need to fight it out. Swallow your pride. Um, you can go on one corner, your spouse go on the other corner. You all can be separated. But it, you chose that man or that woman. And in front of witnesses and making that covenant before God, you got to deal with them through better or worse. That's what you said on your wedding day. So, yeah, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear of what the world would tell you. But they tell you, oh, well, your husband didn't mow the line. Your wife is not giving you peace she, your wife is not your peace divorce her i'm not giving you all a carnal worldly disgusting answer or information i'm just not doing it <laughs> i'm not doing it so thank you all for tuning in 
the Lord willing, I will be back with another live and many more video messages. Thank all of you all for even communicating when I put up a community post. Most of the memes that I put are mine. I told you all that I write them and type them out myself, but some of them are not. Some of the memes are other ones that, because all of us do that. We get memes that we like from other places, and that's okay too. But every single one, I'm not always writing. But I, like I said, it's so weird with some of y'all, because if I put my name on it, it's not liked by a lot of people. But if I leave it out, it, it blows up. It's the weirdest thing. Y'all be weird to me. Y'all are weird. Jessica, I love you too, sweetheart. Adina, thank you, my beautiful sister. I will. Danny, Danny. Okay, Danny. What's going on with you? Danny Adams, what's happening? I haven't been hearing from you like that and seeing you. What's going on, my brother? You need to email me, Danny. Sunny D, yes, my sister. It's getting dark. It's getting dark. But I'm okay. I'll be going in the house really soon. <clears throat> I had a long day. I have had enough of the public. I mean, like, literally everybody was just doing the most today. I'm talking about in traffic, in the grocery store. People were acting weird. I'm not even trying to be funny. So many times I had to call on the name of the Lord today. I'm so serious. I know you all probably think that I'm being dramatic, but I'm not really being dramatic. I really believe that as far now I say with that eclipse and just well because it's such a sensitive time in the spirit, I do believe it's after effects. I believe that because these people are acting weird. Miss <laughs> <clears throat> Lynette, you see me, sis? You know I'm asking about Danny. I hope he okay. Danny needs to email me. Elizabeth Michelle, you might have to go to the ER. I hope you okay. And I believe that. I, I definitely believe that. I literally at one point had to pull my car over. And I just had to pray because people, I'm not even going to tell y'all stuff that it was a couple of people that approached me. Just randomly. I'm minding my business just trying to buy something in the store. Random people. I, I Haven't I seen you from somewhere? I'm like, no, you don't know me. I don't know you. I have no clue who you are. No, you look familiar. Psh. I look familiar. Okay, yeah, well, you see the spirit of the Lord with me. It ain't me. <laughs> I, I, I put that out. You see the spirit of the Lord. Let's be done. Conversation over. Then a woman ran towards my car. Like, serious. It was so weird. It was like she was waiting. I saw her. She could have easily just crossed the street. She had on sunglasses, a bag. It was a white woman. But I knew it was spiritually. It was some demons. It was some stuff going on. But I, but I'm trying to drive and she was waiting for me to go past her and she was lunging at my vehicle and I had to speed up, hit the accelerator to go past her. Just random. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> I, I can't do it. I'm like, yeah, God, I've had enough of the public today. Time for Kiki to go in the house and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> seriously and i'm not afraid i'm not afraid i just was more agitated and maybe god want me to stop being irritated and agitated guys i'm not real sure i don't know but i just know it was weird because i like like sometime last year i remember i was driving down the street and i saw this man he looked drunk he was swinging his arms in the street he was screaming and hollering he has a lot of stuff going on demonically. I clearly saw that. And cars were passing him and he was lunging at their cars. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. But anyway, when I got to the guy that was in the street lunging at all these cars, I kid you not, this happened last year. I was on my way home. When I got to him, he put his arms down. He came towards my vehicle. But when he looked at me and saw me, he put his arms down. And he didn't do anything. When I drove past him, he started raising his hands up and lunging at every other car. I kid y'all not. As God is my judge. Just weird stuff. And the most recent, not the lady that lunged at me today, but uh, about two months ago, I was with my brother. I saw the woman from afar off digging in a garbage can. She was at the bus stop digging in the garbage can. She, It was a stick in a garbage can. I see her pulling out the stick. 
she had came at a couple of cars with the stick and after she swat at a couple of cars driving past she would go back up on the curve and stand by the garbage can in the back of my mind while i was at that stoplight i was looking at my brother i said this lady is about to come towards my car i don't even think i don't remember if i said it out loud or if it was just a secret thought it might have just been a thought but i'm like this is something demonic going on with this lady this lady is about to come towards my vehicle sure enough when that light turned green she hopped off that curb so quick with that broom swinging that broom at my truck i'm like wow and my brother started laughing we kind of like laughed it off but in the back of my mind i'm like yeah something's going on here it's 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 you know i don't know then it was a man i was coming out of a store and he was standing on the bus stop this was an older white man I'm mad at my business. I wasn't even looking at him, but I felt somebody looking. And I happened to look, and he was just mean mugging me. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. That's... <laughs> Woo! Uh -uh. He just was really mean. Uh, I'm talking about to the point when I drove past him, he turned around and kept mean mugging me. I went to Walmart yesterday. It was a witch I saw in there. I knew what the lady was. Yeah, I, I, I know y'all find this stuff funny, but it's a real thing. I know it's. I know y'all probably not gonna believe, but it's a very real thing. And this witch kept looking at me. I knew immediately who she was, what she was. She couldn't even barely bag her stuff up. She turned around watching me and looking at me, and I was looking her dead in the eye. I was waiting for her. Oh, you want to cut up in this Walmart? Go right ahead. <laughs> Pull it if you want to. So that's what that was, y'all. It's all good. I love them. I send them nothing but blessings. Jessica, sis, look, look. <laughs> I, I literally need to be on Instacart just like you. I kid you not. Man, Mr. Hoodie, that's a fact. That's a fact. No weapon form. Oh, I know. I know how they kicking it up jake farm oh y'all on point i i see y'all y'all are all right miss miss lynette jessica i know y'all can laugh i'm not offended because i was giggling but then it, it, it's, it's a seriousness to it as well because see when you know you covered by god you don't get scared the stuff that they doing but you be kind of thrown back bad because you're not looking for it i don't be looking for this stuff i'm trying to focus on what i'm trying to do Saved you and I see you. So yeah, guys, that's that's it for that. I tried to give y'all some light. <laughs> but Mr. Hoodie Kingdom advances all of you all. I love you all. I love you all. And so I'm going to end this live. Like I said, I explained to you all about the one-on-ones again. I got to put those messages out. But I will talk to all of you all soon, the Lord willing. Pray for me, and I'm going to continue to pray for you all. Felicia Brown, I see you, my sister. I see you. Save Juden, you know I will. Jessica, you know I will. Mr. Hoodie, I, I, most definitely. You know I love you too. Kimberly, hey, boo. How are you, Kimberly? I got to give Kimberly care away. I got to give her a shout out. Kimberly show up every time. Kimberly is always, if y'all look on a lot of my community posts and videos, y'all going to see Kimberly care away, her comments up there. That girl come up there all the time. TikTok trends, you said, I'm not going to say the cuss word, but you said you look like under the bed. Oh, you saying I look like I'm under a bed. Okay, I'm going to keep that. I'm not going to delete that because it's kind of funny. <laughs> so if I look like I'm under a bed, are you scared? Gamer360, hey, hey to you too. I got a, I got a sense of humor. I laugh at some of y'all little jokes. When y'all crack y'all little jokes, you scared? I guess I'm the boogeyman. Yeah, I'm under a bed now. I disappeared from out of my car. Now I'm in the house under my bed. So I hope you scared. Call your mom. Call your dad. Get your flashlight. Get your rosary beads. Do something. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> Save Juden. 
See, when y'all come with these jokes and saying this stuff, I hey, look. <laughs> I get with you. I can get with you in that department. <laughs> GK, you said you look like my nightmares. I look like your nightmares? That's not good. <laughs> Dinah, you said you are scared. You might rob me. Well, I might rob you. Yeah, no, sorry, Dinah, not a thief. I'm literally not a thief. I don't steal nothing and take nothing from nobody. I think I stole when I was a little kid. I think I stole some bazooka bubble gum out of 7-Eleven. I was a little girl in the 80s. Yeah, I think I did that. But that's about it. Miss Lynette, thank you, my sister. TikTok trends, I see you. Lena, I see you. Oh, thank you, Lena. Ed, what is it? Ubi, you said I'm really making you scared. Y'all, <laughs> GK, you said I'm camouflaged in the dark. Y'all are hilarious. Y'all are so funny. But y'all can crack y'all jokes. I'm not mad. Long as it's respectful. I, I block people and delete their comments when they start getting disrespectful. But if y'all just cracking jokes, it's not deep like that to me. I'll probably laugh with you. Nora Dan, I surely will. I surely will be praying for you. Oh, uh, thank you, Miss Lynette. Welcome aboard. I'm happy you're here with me. TikTok trends, of course. I am your friend. I told y'all I'm a little sister to some, a big sister to some, a mother to some, a auntie to some, a friend to some, because all ages come here. All ages, races, and backgrounds follow me and come to my channel. And some of the, a lot of people that come up here, they're not subscribed to me, but they just join in. So I'm thankful, you know, for all of that. GK, I'm, of course, I'm a very chill person. I'm not in the spirit of God every day, all day. <laughs> Ubi, you said I'm I'm so black. I blend in so well. <laughs> Oh, wow. GK, you have mommy issues. Can I be your mom? Um, I, I can't be your mom. I could be like an auntie to you or a big sis to you. I don't know how old you are, but, but I can't be your mom. Um, 24K2 underscore Max, you said give your friend gay porn. A shout out, he got cancer. Oh, blessings up to him. Blessings up to him. We come against the spirit of cancer in Jesus' name. So let me get out of here, guys. You all be safe and enjoy your weekend because I know it's Friday tomorrow. I'll still be releasing shorts daily for you all to see because i know a lot of you all i have so many videos i have over 600 videos and i know a lot of you all you're not gonna go all the way back to view them so i release shorts but if you want to see the full video click down at the bottom of my shorts that i release and you can see the full video for that particular clip for 60 seconds that you see i just want to put that out there again too so see you guys later and I love you all. So until next time.